Howdy, Possum Patty here, and today I'm making owls. So come on along. I was inspired by Deanie at Hot Threads SD to make some slow stitched owls, and I will put that link to her video below so you can go over and check it out. And I just kind of went in my own direction a little bit. I started these owls the other day. Uh, we were having a storm, Henri, and our power went out for about a day and a half. And we do have a generator that runs essentials, but I didn't do any recording during that time. So I had lots of time to sit and think about making little slow stitch owls. Now this is the first one that I made. This is my prototype. A little bit different than Deanie's. I did go around the edge, but I think this is called a blanket stitch. But I noticed I missed a few in a few places. Like it's not supposed to look like that, but that's okay. And instead of doing a separate beak, I just made a larger triangle and stuck two eyes. So this is supposed to be the head and then this little part peeking down is the beak. And I did blanket stitch around the wings. And I used the big button eyes. And then the second one I made is almost the same, except for I decided to put a backing on it. Now this one I'm just gonna glue down in my journal so it didn't matter what the back looked like. And this one may wind up being glued down in my journal too, but I wanted to see how it looked with a back on it. So it's kind of cute because somebody might want to say make one of these owls and stick it in maybe a pocket in their journal. You can actually attach something to the back of this, like a little photo or something, couldn't you? Make it like a little photo card and put it in a pocket in a journal. That would be cute. Okay, if you want to know how to make these, go to Deanie's channel. I'll just describe step by step how I made them, and then I'm going to make a little bit of a different one. So to make these, first thing I did was draw an owl. Now you don't really need any details. Basically, it's an egg. So however big you want it, you just want to make an egg. Might want to make it a little fatter at the bottom. And then at the top, you want to put the two feather tufts. These are not ears, although everybody calls them ears on the owl. It's just a fluff of feathers that are very expressive. They can lay them down and stand them up, but their ears are down here, not up there, but people call these ears. They're just two tufts of feathers. And basically that's it. So then I cut this out. So this will be my pattern for the body. Gee, I almost made it the same size and I didn't even trace it. Doesn't have to be perfect. This is just a fun slow stitching. Slow stitching is to embroidery like junk journal is to what? Scrapbooking? No rules, only write whatever you want to do. Okay, now I need some wings. So I use this as a pattern. Well, I mean, I use this as a pattern for that, but I'm just showing you how to make a pattern. Came out a little bit bigger. Look at that. Almost the same. Okay, so then I just sort of measured how big I wanted the wings to be and say from about there to there. And I followed the shape of the outside of the body. Made it a little flatter on the inside. Oops. Okay, 
depends on how big you want the wings to be. So that's one wing like that. And if you want the wings to be about the same, you take this pattern and flip it over because this is for the other side. And you can just trace it around. Cut this side out. Like that. So now you have the two wings. Okay, I used, I just used buttons for eyes, so I didn't make it any kind of eye pattern. But I did make a headpiece, this piece over here, which is basically the top of the head. So I'm going to trace that, top of the head. And then it comes down to a point, sort of like a triangle with a rounded top. Very easy to draw. See how this came out. And this, I made this out of a different kind of material. So that stands out a little bit. And then I put the eyes up here. I use these. I did a two layer button on these. I did like a shape button and a round button. So that looks like the beak down there. And I made these out of a different kind of material. Like that. So that's how you build your owl. So I just take my patterns, I trace them on material, and I just, if you can see this, slow stitched it on, and put on the buttons, and then I blanket stitched around the wings. You can, oops, can't see it on the back of this one, I'll show you on this one. Then I blanket stitched around, and I slow stitched the two wings on. And, you know, I just went there all around the edge. Basically, that's it. Oh, on these, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot. You're seeing this here, and I'm not even telling you about it. I use this polyester backing on the back of this owl. And that's one of the reasons I did the blanket stitch around the edge was because this was on the back. And I did put a layer under the wing. Can you see that? So the wings are a little puffy. So this is nice and soft and cuddly. And this does have the fiber fill in there. You could see that on the edge right there. So these are two almost like little quilty owls. I love their fun button eyes and their fun colors. This one reminds me of fall, this material. This is scrap material I got at a yard sale in the spring. And this is from Walmart, I think. Yeah, Walmart sells these little quilting squares and big packs. So this is Walmart Owl and this is Yard Sale Owl. And this is how you make your little pattern. But I'm going to do a different owl because while I was digging through my stash. Put that back in the tub so I don't lose everything. I found this pack of wood cutouts from, you guessed it, the Dollar Tree. And I went, oh wow, there's an owl right there. I can use that wooden owl 
for a pattern. And here he is. And I was hoping it would fit on my quilting strips. But he's just a little too fat for that. Now you don't have to put this puffy stuff on there. You can do whatever you want. Put it back, not put it back. Put the quilting stuff, not put the quilting stuff. Make it out of different kinds of paper. There's an idea. And then you can really make a journaling card out of this. Well, maybe I'll do one of those before I get to the end of the video. So he doesn't really fit on these quilting strips, except I can probably make some wings from those. But I got lots of this, and I wanted to try... Uh, There's a different kind of backing. The other stuff was polyester. This is softer. This is more like a cotton. Very natural feel on this one. I want to try that out. My owl is in here somewhere. So, look at this awesome material. Let's see, do we want to do a gray owl? Maybe we'll do a gray owl with... I'm still going to make the little triangle up here. I'm still going to do this little piece. With, with what? I'm going to do that little piece with, so this is pretty, maybe this is light gray, this is dark gray, maybe I'll make the wings out of this, that would be pretty, and maybe the head, maybe I'll use this green for the head, you know these are pinked along the edge and I do have a pair of pinking shears, but I left the pinking on these, it's hard to see, but I did leave the pinking on the point parts of that. So that would be like that. All right, first things first, I am going to take my owl and draw him on the back. And then cut him out. So this is an easy trace. This one's going to have feet and wings that hang out over the side and little tiny tufts at the top. Okay, now I'm going to cut that out. Okay, I'm just going to take this Elmer's Craft Bond Extra Strength glue stick. And I don't want to use that. I want to use with my little glue glue board. Put a little Elmer's glue in the back of this. Hold it, oops, hold it to the backing. Okay, now I'm going to cut that out. Okay, I'm just going to cut a piece of this. Where's my little owl? Hello. Why do I lose everything that's right in front of me? Okay, here he is. Do the back side. About there. Let's see how that looks. If I don't like it, I'll change it.
Now this guy's too small for those big buttons. I'm gonna have to use smaller buttons. Like that. It's up too high. I think this needs to come down at a different shape than what they have on here. So I'm going to experiment with that. And I think I will experiment using a piece of paper. Okay, the top is that big. But how far down do we want this to come? We want it to come further than that, we know. Okay, let's see how this would look. And if it looks good, we'll use it for a pattern. I think that'll work. I think that will work. So now I'm going to trace this on here. And cut that out. And that's going to get sewn on there. I don't know, maybe that's a little too long. No, we'll leave it there because that's going to be his beak. I think I like it. It's a little different than the other one. But that's okay. Okay, that's going to get sewn on there. Now i got to design the wings. To design the wings... Don't lose the buttons. Let's see. I'm going to put this on here. And I'm going to trace here. And I'm going to trace here. Like that. So for the wings, all I have to do is add that. And add that that. There. Now that was easy peasy. I'm going to cut this out. So I cut out the two little wings. I placed them on a piece of material and traced around them and I cut out the material and now I am going to do the glue stick thing again I guess. I can make the wings a little puffy using this cotton batting I guess it's called. I'm not a quilter. But I guess if you were a quilter, this would be easy peasy, right? Probably breaking all the rules. I don't know what the rules of quilting are. Are there rules for quilting? Anybody out there a quilter? Crazy quilter? I mean, you quilt crazy quilts, not that you're crazy. Okay, I'm going to cut these out. Okay, there's my little owl. I think those but the whoops. I think I will do double buttons on his face. I found some smaller stars. Got a little glue stick on my finger. And I'll probably go slow stitch this while I watch TV with Mr. Possum. And then I will come back at another time and show you how it came out. I think it's cute. 
course, I think these are cute too. They're all cute. Look at the owls. What a great thing to make for fall. Look at that. The owl family. Oops. Bring them down a little bit. The owl family. Aww. So cute. Okay, I did a slow stitch all the way around the edge to attach this nice soft cotton batting on the back. And I did the same thing around each wing to attach the wing. And then I did the eyes, sewed on like a double button. Stars aren't exactly the same size, but that's okay. It's a quirky bird. And now I have my happy little owl family. And these will probably go into my journal. And when I finished that, then I was working on the paper ones. So I cut out a bunch, well a bunch, I think there's seven of them. I cut out seven of the owls using this wooden die cut from the Dollar Tree. And then I die cut a whole bunch of little flowers and I'm going to use those for eyes. And I just cut by hand some wings, all different wings and different head pieces. And now I'm going to play mix and match and see which colors I want to put with which colors. And then I'm going to glue them together. I flipped my mat over so all those beautiful sunflowers don't distract me while I figure out which colors I want to put with which. So I'm just going to try different things here and see what I like. I like to mix florals and geometrics. They're called the floral clash when you do that. Kind of like these. I want to try to be a little bit random with this. Put some color on this guy. That guy needs some color. Although I could give him these pretty ones here. Yeah, that gives that guy some color. Put the stripes with the flowers. Polka dots. I got polka dots. Yellow looks good on pink. I didn't plan these out ahead of time. Oh, we got polka dots. Polka dots and stripes. I don't know. Let's see. We got pink. I think a solid color looks better on this guy because he's very colorful already. I got more colorful ones here. And I got stripes. And I got flowers. So, I got extra ones. These are from different paper sets, so they don't really go together. Those colors match, even though they're from different sets. Let's see. Give this guy a pink one. And... That's pretty. Put yellow there, right? Yellow and pink. Kind of like that. Okay, I got extra eyes. In case I don't like that. Okay, now the die cuts, I have some dark and some light, mostly green. And these I punched out of an envelope from a birthday card that was green on the outside and blue on the inside. So I can see which ones I like the best. I was thinking of going for some of these with a darker color. Like so. And then I might put a jewel. I want a tiny jewel. I might cut off one of these little tiny jewels from the Dollar Tree to put in the center of the eye. I'm thinking about that. I think it's going to be a lot of work, but I'm thinking about it. Kind of like these dark ones because that'll make the 
eye pop out more. Get them around the right way. These will all be my quirky owls here. My quirky owls. Maybe I can make a blue one. Put that over like that. Mm -hmm. I might do that on some of them. Put it on backwards. Should have turned the die around, I guess, right? On some of these. I think this one needs dark eyes. Dark eyes. That's a song. I think that's a Russian song. Okay, we're getting there. Okay, let's give this guy some blue eyes. I don't know if I'm going to use these brown ones. Although that brown brown might go good there. I don't know if I like that solid one. Let's put that one. Then I'm not going to use the brown ones there because that's too much brown. Let's do green. Let's do green and blue for this guy. Okay, two more. Two more, two more, and let's see. Nobody's getting the light brown eyes, but that's okay. We'll save them for something else. Ooh, how about two different color eyes? Hmm, that could be a quirky bird. We can do two different color eyes. One like that, and one like this. Got to be one in every family, right? One in every family. Oh, one more. Should we give this one some brown eyes? With what in the center? Do we want green? Or do we want blue? Or one of each, like that. All right, here's my quirky bird family. I'm just gonna glue this down and then I'll be back. I'm almost done. I just wanted to show you how it looks without just a little bit of bling. I just put these little tiny jewels in the eyes. I think that really makes the eyes pop. That eye got crooked, that's okay. And then I decided to add these little Dollar Tree heart stickers. Bling, bling, bling. Wanda had sent me a bunch of those. So I like to use what I have. I like to use what people send me. And so that's with bling and without bling. So I'm just going to finish up this last one. Okay, there's my finished completed happy little owl family these are the paper owls i did change the wings on this guy number one number two i love this stripe one with the polka dotted wings one of my favorites i also love this one he's kind of a dull color but i gave him a lot of color on the wings and this one got red eyes the glue still wet, you can see there, and a red heart. And this one's very boho. Polka dots, pattern, stripes. He's got green eyes and a green heart. And another boho with the paisley. And my striped it owl. Instead of calling this the 
Cosmic Smash book. I'm going to have to start calling this the Monster because it's so big. I think I'm just going to go ahead and glue my puffy little owls right here on this page. I'm going to use my very soft and quilty little material owls with the big button eyes. We get the baby owl. We get the mama owl and we get the papa owl. And I think I'm just going to put them right here on this page. I'm just going to glue them down and maybe just journal that uh, inspired by Deanie at Hot Threads SD. Okay, my quirky birds have landed on their tree. They're now in their home. Quirky Owls inspired by Dini at Hot Threads SD. Little journaling along the side on that tree. And my Paper Owls will become Ephemera. Their journaling card. You can journal on the back. Or just Happy Mail. Whatever I want to do with them. I still have some elephants I made quite a while ago. And this was a lot of fun. Dini, I want to thank you for the inspiration. I know I'm like monkey see, monkey do. If I get inspired by somebody to do something, I like to make some samples and get them into my journal. And this way, when I go back and look through my journal, I can see, oh yeah, I like to make those L's and then, you know, use them for another project again. But I like to keep a record of all my ideas. So thanks for coming along today and happy junk journaling and happy making some owls great decorations for the fall if you want to make some you know what these are not fall colors mmm now I have another idea I should make some in some fall colors for some fall journaling mmm I'll have to do that all right thanks for coming along today happy junk journaling bye bye now